The initial condition. Uh, this uh, initial condition problem. Uh, that's because it says initial condition, and pretty much what that means is that they give us a point. So when you plug in a zero, your y equals six. That means you get a you have a zero for the x and a six for your y. And here is your differential equation. Now what we're trying to do is we're trying to solve for a specific, unique solution for this differential equation, as opposed to the general solution. The general solution um, would have a C. The specific would not have a C. So instead of writing, writing Y prime, I'm gonna write DY over DX because that's the same as Y prime. And then I have two Y. Uh, the first job here is to separate the variables. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by DX. <clears throat> And then I get dy equals 2y dx. And then I'm going to get this y over to the other side. So I'm going to divide by y on both sides. So divide by y and kill that guy. And then I have 1 over y here. And after I get <coughs> all the y's and all the x's on one side, it doesn't matter which side you guys put this 2 on. It doesn't matter. Um, we integrate both sides. So when I integrate the left side, I get natural log of y. And we're going to put absolute value bars around that because we can't have a negative inside of a, a natural log. And on the other side, the antiderivative of 2x is just, uh, or 2 is 2x. And then we have our constant. Now, you're supposed to get a plus c every time we do an integral. But the reason why we don't have a plus c on both sides is because if we did have a plus c over here, we would just move it over to this side, and it would um, combine, or I guess merge into that c. It just makes a different constant. So <clears throat> there's your c. Now what we're going to do is we're going to plug in our point. When we plug in the point, that's how we get rid of the C. And then we're going to get the Y alone. <clears throat> so let's just plug it in. So we have natural log of 6 equals 2 times 0 plus C. It looks like C equals the natural log of absolute value of 6. Actually, I don't need to do absolute value of 6 because it, because it is already positive. So we can take those guys off. Let's just put a 6 right here. And then I'm going to go back to my original problem and I'm going to plug in the C. So now I have natural log of the absolute value of y equals 2x plus natural log of 6. If I wanted to get this y out of the natural log, I would have to raise both sides to the base e. So now this is an exponent right here, and so is this. Whenever you have e raised to the natural log power, you get what whatever's left inside. And so we have a y equals e to the 2x plus natural log of 6. <clears throat> now I look over here, I don't see that anywheres. And maybe we have to do a little bit more simplification on over here. Now, you see how the exponent has adding inside of it? That's because, um, well, when you see that, you should think of times when you have like x times x, uh, I don't know, to the b power. What are you going to do with those exponents when you have multiply two bases that are the same? You're going to add them. So we have x to the 2b. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go backwards. <clears throat> I'm going to say e to the 2x plus, or times e to the natural log of 6. Oh, snap. Look at this e and this natural log. They get to cancel each other out again. Oh, snap. <clears throat> that means we're left with a 6. So that means we have 6 times e to the 2x. And that is what our y value is. Let's see if we have that up there. Yes, we do. A little shout of excitement. Yay. That one's done. Oh, we got another one. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna rewrite it to say dy over dx equals 2y minus 6. That way you can separate the variables and then integrate and then plug in your initial condition. All righty, students. Let's first um, <clears throat> multiply both sides by dx. So I'm gonna have a dx over here. No more dx right there. And then uh, I'm going to... I can't, I cannot, I cannot just subtract 2y from both sides. That's kind of what I want to do, but you can't do that. Because whatever you have has to be multiplying to the dy to the other side. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to divide both sides by 2y minus 6. Okay, and so um, now we just have on the right side 1 dx. Because that dx is multiplying to the whole side. Actually, I should have put those parentheses there right away. Okay, the dx is multiplying it to the whole side. And so on the other side, now you have 1 over 2y minus 6 dy. Now, integrate. Okay, let's do the right side first because that's the easy side. 
Um, e to the zero is one. <clears throat> okay, this side would be just x plus c. The antiderivative of one is just gonna be x because we're taking a derivative with respect to x. This side over here, we have um, we have u substitution problem. Why do we have a u substitution problem? How do we see that? Because I have a function, this 2y minus 6, that's a function of y. I have a function inside of a function, okay? So I'm going to make a u equal 2y minus 6, and that's d, du. I take the derivative with respect to y. du equals 2 dy, okay? Uh, I got a dy here, but I don't see a 2 anywhere, so I'm going to write this as 1 half du equals dy. And so I'm gonna be using this guy and this guy, and I'm gonna sub those dudes in. So it looks like this. We have the integral of one over u, and then I'm gonna have a one half du. I put the one half out because he's a scalar. Now if I anti-derive that dude, we get natural log of u, don't forget your absolute value bars, times one half equals x plus c. Uh, but now we have to plug what u is back in. So we have one half natural log of 2y minus 6 equals x plus c. Finally, we get our initial condition. We plug that in. We have a, a 0 for x and a, a 5 for the y. So we have one half natural log of 2 times 5 minus 6 equals 0 plus c. So on this side, we get, uh, that's a 10 minus 6. That's going to be a 4. Natural log of 4. So we have 1 half natural log of 4 equals C. Now, some of you guys are going to like this next part uh, because you might not be very familiar with log rules. But because I have a coefficient in front of log, I can make him into an exponent on that 4. So it's 4 raised to the 1 half power. 1 half power is the same as the square root. Okay, so uh, the square root of 4 is 2, so I have natural log of 2 equaling c. Now I'm going to go back to uh, this guy right here, and I'm going to plug in my c to see what we get. So we have 1 half natural log of, oops, I'm sorry, the other guy, the guy right below him, 2y minus 6. And then I'm going to plug my c in, x uh, plus natural log of 2. All right. Now, uh, what I have to do to um, make it look like all one of these dudes is get the y alone. So, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of that. And then I'm going to raise both sides to the base e. So, that goes away. And then I have 2y minus 6 equals, we don't need to worry about the absolute value bars anymore, equals e to the 2x times e to the... Um, 2 natural log of 2. Now I'm going to take that 2 and put them as an exponent right there. Oh man, it's back to a 4 right there. And then these natural logs, that natural log and that e cancel out. So we just have a 4 times this e to the 2x. So we have 4 e to the 2x 2y minus 6. Now we got to get the, the y alone by adding 6 to both sides. So we have 2y equals 4 e to the 2x plus 6, then divide everything by 2, 2e two e to the 2x plus 3, which is right there.